We good? All right. Welcome to the Edge Podcast with Chip and Christy. I'm your host, Chip McCarter, and along with me, as always, the lovely Christy Ogle. Uh, this week, we wanted to come and talk about the stages of life uh, for a business. Uh, a business is almost like a person. It goes through different stages of growth, uh, different stages of issues and problems, and they change throughout the whole cycle. Uh, so we wanted to talk about the stages all the way from birth to beginning, all the way to the end uh, for, for any business. Uh, every business goes through this, some faster than others, some stay in it longer and uh, actually go through this and, and do really well. Uh, Christy, let's, let's crank it up and uh, talk about the stages of life for a business. You know, all of us know the stories of Kmart and Sears and JCPenney, right? So they had this amazing business. They were the Amazon before Amazon. And apparently the CEOs or whoever was running those companies didn't have the intelligence in business to see what was coming for them. And what came for them? Amazon. It took yeah. one bite, spit them out, and they are gone. So JCPenney and Sears were really the Amazon of the 60s, the 70s, and 80s. I remember when my mom would get that stinking catalog every year that was about this thick. We would order our clothes out of it. I even remember one of my friends that they, their parents bought like a house from it. I'd heard stories from it. So, I mean, they were wonderful. And then they weren't because the lives of their customers totally changed. And now we order stuff from Amazon at the click of a fingertip, anything. And it gets sent to us. I ordered a freaking uh, light for a restaurant that we were doing work on a couple of days ago. I mean, it's crazy the stuff that you can get off of Amazon. And I think that Jeff Bezos understands the life cycle because I remember seeing those pictures of uh, Amazon in the 80s and the 90s, you know, it was barely coming out. And he's in a little room and behind him, it said Amazon, just on a sheet of paper. So, and it originally started out as a book, no, a shoe company, didn't it? Or was it a bookstore? Zappos was shoes, Amazon was books. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't get me lying. I don't know 100% for sure on that one. Yeah, I don't want to lie to you guys either. Um, Google, how did Amazon start? And I'm pretty sure it was books and then it went to shoes. It's acquired Zappos by now, but um, it was, a really good model and what why is like walmart still standing and jc penny fell and the reason is is they were resourceful and they were smart they know the life cycle of a business sears and jc penny could have survived if they would have changed it to online ordering instead of catalog ordering because people were just quite sick of it yeah, you shift the, the shift to online is what knocked them out. They didn't shift fast enough. Um, I don't even know if they shifted at all, to be honest with you. I never saw any websites or heard about anybody doing anything. They, I mean, they had credit cards. Uh, yeah. Both of those places had credit cards that people, you know, religiously spent and shopped there. They were the biggest stores in the mall uh, everywhere you went. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know. I the face of the earth. Yeah, there's definitely new businesses in the where their stores used to be and everything. Yeah. And they could have saw it coming if they would have wisened up and looked at like Montgomery Ward. Because it was gone about 10 or 15 years before JCPenney and Sears, but they didn't do it quick enough. And Walmart almost didn't do it quick enough because Warren Buffett dropped all of his Walmart stock one day. Walmart goes plummeting, kind of like Facebook has recently, um, and they lost millions, probably billions in a day because Warren Buffett dropped their stock because he saw he dropped it and then he bought Amazon stock because Amazon was on the way up and Walmart was on the way down and Walmart actually closed hundreds of stores that year. And that was just a few years ago before COVID hit. 
So there's 10 stages in the life cycle of a business. And once you go around to one of the stages, like uh, Sears and J.C. Penney did, and they tried. They tried to save this aging company before it died. And unfortunately, they didn't get in there quick enough and pull it back. And by us talking about this kind of stuff and training on it on our podcast and in our, our uh, Handy Man Business Fundamentals, I just want you guys to know we've went through a lot of these things and we're by no means saying that we're geniuses at business. We're just trying to help people do better because once you know better, you do better. So I want to go right into it. Most people that are starting a Handy Man business, they have this idea that they get into business and they're instant millionaires and they have all of this freedom and flexibility that comes along with a business. But a business is like a newborn and you have to nurture it to make it grow. So the first thing is that inception idea of the business and that's when it's born. That moment that you take on the risk by starting your own business um you're fulfilling your needs by opening a business and it's really you managing you that's yeah, what it sure. is um, yeah. you basically have a job 100 yeah i remember when i opened the doors of our handy man business i was like this is it we're gonna have this freedom and flexibility <laughs> but it took a while for that income and profitability to come along even though we were the ones doing the jobs we had to figure out that perfect point and that perfect job that bring in the best amount of money so it's really your business is born it starts to take shape and then you move on to the infancy yeah this is a race for survival this is yeah. where maybe you hire your first person it's you inc so you and somebody else you're running the business but your focus is on production it's on doing the job it's on servicing the customer taking care of their needs and in the infancy of a business cash flow can be a real problem and i've seen it we were there mm -hmm. networking is a super important part of infancy in my opinion getting out yeah. there and networking and meeting people and being available to to try to connect to your community yeah and chip is great at networking i actually met him in person we've met before that online um yeah. on facebook he interviewed me but we our first real meeting was at a networking meeting i think it was online too wasn't it chip it might have been zoom i think our first one was zoom but the, but the Waco chapter was still meeting in person. Um, yeah. And that, that's what I joined. Yeah. Yeah. And that got us foot in the door with several customers. I remember that very first time I went to a networking meeting. I think it was a BNI. and i And um, I uh, wrote a check for about $1,000, which I don't recommend to a new business. But it was me, Inc., right? Me and my husband, Inc. And we had to get customers coming in the door. So I wrote a $1,000 check where I put $1,000 on the credit card for BNI. and Yes, it is that expensive. Yes, there were additional fees. But yes, it was worth it because I wrote this check and with our, uh, no, I put it on the Amex back in the day. And uh, I prayed and prayed before that Amex bill came that we pay that with the jobs that came in. And we did. Within a week or two, we had several deep cleans um, and handyman jobs that paid for it. But that is a scary thing in the beginning of business is cash flow. Yeah, getting out. You have to get out there, though. You have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to just get out there and meet everybody. And don't, you know, and, and do don't feel like you're repeating yourself too much because you need to. You got to get it through other people's heads of what you do or else they'll never know and they'll never use you. So. Yeah. But yeah, that infancy part is a, it's a struggle, man. That's when you're out there really struggling and hitting the streets. Yeah, your business then starts to walk and talk and grow a little bit. Um, it Maybe you're starting to build somewhat of a management team. Um, but 
the entire business really is on you and you're the one that makes the decisions but in this piece of your business, it's kind of like the growth of a toddler, right? Where they're just from zero to, but that's how your business is. Everything's accelerated. Now, cash flow is still a little bit of a concern, but your management is really by crisis. And I talk to people that have been in business 20 or 30 years, and they're still in the toddler phase of their business. Because it's still putting out fires. They're managing from crisis to crisis to crisis and never really work on building or growing or aging that business in the life cycle. Because if you can't get out of that toddler infancy birth mentality, that's where your business is going to be stuck. Yeah, you have to act, you know, proactively, uh, not, not necessarily just always reactively, you know, because if you just are always having to react Instead of, instead of actually, you know, preparing for the issues that could come up. That's all it is, is just looking in, at all the options that could happen and preparing for every single one of them. And that's the difference between the success stories and the people who don't make it. Yeah, and I mean, I have adult children now. So the most, the least fun in the life cycle of my children was the teenage years. You're getting ready to go there with that. Yeah, um, yeah, we're close. Ever be in your favor? Yeah. <laughs> trouble. Yeah, I'm definitely in trouble, no doubt. This is where crisis is really started from management. Um, you'll start to develop that personal team. You're going to manage the business. Cash flow might not be much of a problem at this point, but their growth focus. That's where a lot of our people come into handy hand business fundamentals is they want to grow their business and they want to grow it quickly. And to be able to grow it and stand out from everybody else that's in the handy hand business, you actually have to innovate your handy man business. And that's one thing that we've been training on is putting that residual income into some handy man businesses over the last couple of weeks with our training. And um the leaders are usually go 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 and maybe they're too busy to attend those meetings now about the growth of their business sometimes and i was one of these chip i became overconfident and you know what trouble was lurking because i didn't know everything about my business it's kind of like a teenager they think they're invincible they think they know everything and my first go around business, I felt that way. And you know what? It bit me in the ass. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Now I had better... a few experiences. Yeah. I paid hundreds of thousands, if not millions, in the stupid tax from being a teenager. But that's a thing in business. And here's the thing you might think I'll just go from birth to the zone of maximization. It doesn't go that way. It's kind of like the seasons in life. You have to go through every season before uh, you can get to spring and summer, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. can't just go from winter to fall. It doesn't work that way. You have to go through the seasons and the life cycle of a business is the same. Some people will go, well, I didn't go through that. Maybe I did. You just didn't realize it. Yeah. Yeah, or didn't remember it because you were hustling so much and didn't have much time to spare you were working on your business so much yeah yeah you reflect on it and then you go from there uh, the next stage young adults this is where you're starting to really anticipate the future you're making committed decisions in your handyman business your focus is on growth and standards usually at this point um and systems and you really are redefining what long-term success uh, as. And you'll sometimes rebirth your identity of the business and you're ready to settle down and really get serious about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you just decide to figure out how to get that residual income, figure out how to scale up to that next level. Um, not necessarily have to be the one that answers the phone, makes the calls, does the jobs takes the money, does the marketing, does the sales, you know, you realize you can start growing and, and yes. becoming the adult, right? Yeah, and then you get into this zone of maximization, this, 
zone of maturity. It's like your business has gotten there and it's starting to kind of level off and you've got these amazing profits. You're starting to reap the rewards of freedom and flexibility. You've got systems in place, which is what we train in handyman business and fundamentals. Instead of just going by the seat of your pants, um, you're serving yourself and your customers in this amazing way. Your business is run by a management team and you organization knows who they are and where they're going. Sales and profits are skyrocketing at this point. But it, the thing about it is if you don't innovate and keep going during the zone of maximization, it starts to go on over to midlife. And this has happened to Apple several times. Remember mm -hmm. when Apple first came out, it was the PCs, the personal computers. And um, then I believe it was IBM came in and started to kind of push them out. And Apple was on the free fall. Uh, Steve Jobs was fired. They brought in a CEO from Pepsi. And uh, Apple stocks just kept declining and declining and declining. But they realized that they started to age in the business and Apple actually almost started to get institutionalized with very few businesses can ever come back from. But Steve Jobs came back, he brought in that innovation and he came up with that little iPod that you put a thousand songs in your pocket. Do you remember those, Chip? Yeah, yeah, I had, I've had a few of them. Yeah, I mean, I had the little one and I had the middle-sized one and then I, I actually got one where I was on The View and they gave me a whole brand new one. It's awesome, but they're not around anymore. But uh, you could have all of these songs in your pocket. So Apple went from personal computers, which was 100% of their business, to now PCs like this are only 13% of Apple's business now. Now it's iPhone and yeah. iPad. These um, are things they innovated and they kept Apple and are keeping Apple in this zone of maximization. That's why it's the first, one of the first trillion, yes, trillion with a T, dollar businesses. So Steve Jobs was smart enough and that, the um, CEO, Tim, now of Apple knows that they have to keep innovating and bringing new things in or they're going to die. And yeah, it happens. Yeah. So he actually saved Apple from the death, which is when there's no longer anything that's sustainable, the vision is gone. Yeah. Blockbuster. No for, exactly. Is now called blockbustering. Yeah, <laughs> that's because they they were huge and everywhere. You still see buildings that you can tell. Oh yeah, that was a blockbuster. You know, <laughs> but they're ghosts. Yeah, I think there's one left. I think there's a series on Netflix that's called The Last Blockbuster, and I thought it closed, especially with COVID. You know, but, yeah. Uh, I saw somebody on YouTube the other day that's like, oh, I'm at the last blockbuster. <laughs> so, so, they're not, so they're not all the way dead yet. Yeah, I mean, you could look at it and you could tell, like, Kmart was here. Um, oh, yeah. You can Target. Sears was here and they didn't bring it back in. So, of course, they died. And you know what? Target started disappearing for a little bit and then they kind of bounced back yeah. in a big way you know yes and now target's like the creme of the they re uh vamp their self and you yeah know, Walmart Remarked and stuff and targets the creme of the creme right it's yeah. more towards target is geared more towards millennials yeah it's it, it's target. supposed to be a little bit more bougie yeah <laughs> a little <laughs> little bit better than walmart you know not much but a little bit yeah and so as a business owner, as a handyman business owner, you need to be able to um, know that there's different stages in the life cycle of a business and start to see it. Because I know with mine, it started to age 
and Max and I had to bring it back out and we're still not back to that zone yet, but we will be there eventually because I know that the things that we need to do, those systems that are put in place to get them there. So, I mean, it's good to be aware of this stuff. You can know it all day long, but you actually have to implement it. And I did all these things. I had the wrong management team. I had the wrong business partner. Cash flow was an issue. I thought I could get bigger and that would solve the problems, but it actually just made the problems a little bit bigger and a lot more to deal with. So now that I am aware of these things, I can help rebuild my businesses to get to those zones of maximization. Nice. Yeah, for sure. And you, you, you just have to keep an eye on your business. Once you get to that zone of maximization, you have to be willing to adapt and move forward in case things change. Um, I mean, for one right now, if you're not online, you're, you're doing something. If you're being successful and you're not online right now, I would love to talk to you and hear what you're doing uh, because you have to be online now. And there's so many different ways to do it. So many amazing free platforms and then inexpensive all the way to expensive. You know, there's, there's ways to market and run a business online, but you just have to be willing to go to that next thing, that new thing that everybody's doing, because that's what happens to these businesses. They're just not, they weren't willing to accept the internet was just blowing up is really what happened to a lot of these businesses. Yeah, um, and that's and it's amazing. really resisted when um, the internet came along. That's why what, mm -hmm. what they did that almost killed Walmart was they didn't go online fast enough. They thought Amazon was just a phase, right? And mm -hmm. uh, they they couldn't anticipate COVID was going to happen, even though that really helped Walmart with the profits because that's the only place you could really shop for a couple of years, yeah. right? For hell, yeah. Close. But they didn't get online quick enough. And when they did get online, Amazon was already 10 or 15 years ahead of them with the online game. And still, there's not many user-friendly websites out there like Amazon is, where you can go in there and you can instantly track it and you can instantly know where your order is coming from. And you can see everything. Like, Walmart's great, but it's still not the years ahead that Amazon was, so it's still playing a little bit of catch up. Mm -hmm. But the difference between Amazon and Walmart, Walmart's profitable. Amazon has never been profitable. So, still to this day, it's millions of dollars in the red every year. But Jeff Bezos knows it will eventually be. Yeah, <laughs> it will eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, those are some things that you've got to know, too. And, I mean, if you've got enough uh, venture capitalists that can help you stay afloat, that's okay. But most people don't have that luxury. No, no. Yeah, most of them, it's their own pockets. So, that and that's why you get, it's easy to get stuck in that, that teen, those teen years where you're kind of the only one hustling, that doing the jobs and living, you know, job to job you know, each, you know, it's, it's not like paycheck to paycheck, but it is job to job. And every time you get paid, you know, you're just looking for that. It's, it's once you start figuring out that, how to bring in that residual monthly, monthly income that you can start relaxing, taking a step back and actually managing your business instead of letting it run you. Exactly. If you never get past me and the guy in the truck, you never have anything really past you having a job, a job. You're, it's you ink. If it doesn't, if you don't ever hire anybody, if you don't have uh, people that are doing the work for you and you're managing the business and eventually get a management team, you have a JOB just over broke because something happens to you, you're done. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to really think about the life cycle of the business and know where you want to go with your business. I mean, if you're 20 years in and it's still you ain't, it's time to take a different path and join us with Amy and Business Fundamentals. We'd love to help you take it to the next level and get in that zone and stay in that zone for a long Yeah, for sure. We definitely would love to help you. Uh, Christy, anything else on the stages of life? No, we just wanted to touch on it today so you guys could kind of see it. We'll go more depth of it in it in the near future. 
but do know there's a life cycle to your business just like there's a life cycle to your kiddos and you yeah for sure and look at your local businesses you can watch you'll see you know some of the businesses that were around when you were a kid aren't there anymore some of them have adapted and changed and are doing well so you just look around you'll see the life cycle and all the other businesses around you as well as yours uh but yeah so uh for now we love you stay safe and this has been the edge podcast with chip and christy you guys have a great day thanks a lot bye-bye